To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous misfortune, or to take up arms against a sea of troubles, and by oppressing end them to die to sleep. To sleep? Perchance to dream, ah, there's the rub. For in that deep, in that sleep of death, where what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect. That makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely. The pains of disprised love, the laws delay, the innocence. The insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make, with the bare bumpkin. Who would Fardell spare to grunt and swear under a weary life? But the dread of something after death, The undiscovered country. From whose burn no, no traveler returns, puzzles the will. And makes us rather bear those ills we have. Then fly to others that we know not of. Thus confidence does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sick, sickly over with the pale past of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment With this regard, their currents turn around and lose the name of action. Suffer you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph, in thy hori horizons, be all my sins remembered. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were bitter my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in. Imagination to give me, to give them shape, or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling beneath earth and heaven? We are errant knaves.
all of us. We are in today's world. Believe none of us. Go thy way to an nunnery. Where's thy father? Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. If thou dost marry, I give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou a chaste, as nice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calamity. Get thee to a nunnery. Go, farewell, or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men knew. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go, and quickly, farewell. Speak this speech, I pray you. As I pronounce it to you, tripling on the tongue, but if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had a leaf. The town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hands thus, but use all gently, for in the very torrents, tempest, and, as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it sooth, soothness, oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig patent fellow tear a passing passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, for who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped for overdoing term and gunt in our Herod's Herod, pray avoid it. Be not too tame, neither. But let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with this special observance, that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature, for anything so overdone is from the purpose of plain, whose end both at the first and now was and is to hold as twere. The mirror up to nature to show virtue, her own feature, scorn, her own image, and the very age and body of the time is form and pressure, now this overdone, or come tardy of, though it makes the unskilled laugh, cannot but make the judicious greed, the censure of the which one, must in your allowance overweigh a whole theatre of others. Oh, there be players that I have seen play and heard others praise, and that highly, not to speak it profanely, that neither having the assent of Christians, nor the gate of Christian, pagan nor man, have so strutted and 
bellowed that I have thought some of nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well. They imitate humanity so abominably. All reform it altogether, and let those that play your clown speak no more than is set down for them, for there be of them that will themselves laugh to set on some quantity of barren spectators to laugh too, though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered that villainous and shows a most pitiable ambition in the fool that uses us. Go, make you ready. Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advancement may I hope from thee? Then no revenue. with thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee. Why should the poor be flattered? No, let the candid tongue lick absurd pomp and crock from pregnant hinges of the knee where thrift may follow fawning. Dost thou hear, since my dear soul was mistress of her choice and could of men distinguish her election, hath sealed thee for herself for thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortunes, buffets, and rewards has tamed with equal thanks, and blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she pleads. Give me that man that is not a passion slave, and I will wear him. In my heart's core, I, in my heart of heart, as I do thee. Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance, which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest that act afoot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle, if his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech. It is a damn ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foolish. Uh, and my imaginations <clears throat> are as a fool as Vulcan stithy, give him heedful note, for I mine eyes will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join, in censure of his seeming, 